Hello and welcome to the special CNBC Africa broadcast. My name is Nozi Pombanjwa and we're coming to you from Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. Now over the last few days at Africa Development Week, what has become transparent is that Africa is not short of development plans. There is Agenda 2063, there are the Sustainable Development Goals and of course at a national level there are the national economic plans of each country. Is there a possibility that given the multiplicity of agendas that we could be missing each other? To help us better understand the answers to some of these difficult questions, we spoke to Adam Elrika. He is the director responsible for macroeconomic policy at the Economic Commission for Africa. This conference is about how to integrate Africa's development agenda. Uh, you, as you know, African head of states adopted in uh, January 2015, the uh, Agenda 2063. And in September 2015, uh, the United Nations General Assembly endorsed the Sustainable Development Goals as a new development framework for the whole world. Now, and we, in uh, July 2015, uh, the fourth conference, the third conference on uh, financing for development was held in Addis Ababa and Addis Ababa Action Agenda on Financing for Development was adopted. Uh, in in uh, December 2015, the whole world converged in Paris and Paris Agreement on Climate Change was signed. Now we have multiple development frameworks for African countries to use in order to integrate into their national development plans. And we need to harmonize and to ensure coherence among all these development frameworks and effectively integrate them into national development plans. So the conference is about how to do that and how to uh, provide support to member states to mainstream, specifically Agenda 2063 and Sustainable Development Goals into their national development plans. And now that Africa has fully embraced the Sustainable Development Goals, how do we ensure that these are seamlessly integrated into the planning processes that exist at national government level across African countries? To take on this tough question, we spoke to Bartholomew Ama. He is the chief responsible for the renewal of planning at the ECA. At the heart of any development progress, it, it's up to the country. The commitment has to be there. I mean, uh, there are countries that have very little resources, but have made tremendous progress on the MDGs and have also actually also started making progress on the SDGs. For example, this country, Ethiopia, has, has a very um, committed uh, leadership in terms of some of the, its uh, growth and transformation plan, which is now being uh, retrofitted to take into account the SDGs. Um, so one is, is commitment. Uh, the second is really um, ensuring that you have the institutional um, capacities and set up to ensure that implementation takes place. Now that we have uh, a focus on sustainable development, the role of the planning commissions becomes central. Uh, sustainable development is, has in the past been seen as being the domain of the environmental um, sectors, yeah. but that's not necessarily the case because sustainable development is not exclusively an environmental issue. It cuts across. It cuts across. So where is your locus of coordination? Mm -hmm. Countries have to determine how they're going to uh, arrange themselves or, or, or you know, pro uh, position themselves to address these goals in an integrated and interlinked fashion. So we need to bring into, a, into the, the play strong coordination on the good leadership, but we also have to have the capacity to understand the policy implications of, say, increased growth on social development and our environment. Let me give you an example. If you want to make agriculture more sustainable by, for example, resorting more to organic agriculture, what are the implications for your crop yields? Because there are, some, there are potential trade-offs. So we need to understand that 
but we need to understand it before we implement the policy. So capacities in, in policy analysis and policy simulation become very central. And that's where we need to target our capacity support and not just talk about capacity development in general. But also technology becomes important because if you're going to uh, follow a green growth trajectory, you need the technologies that ensure that you, uh, if you're industrializing, you minimize your greenhouse gas emissions. It calls for different set um, kinds of uh, technologies to ensure your carbon footprint is, is minimized. Those require initial upfront investments plus capacity uh, and a technological transfer. The Nigerian Minister of State responsible for state planning and budget, Her Excellency Zeneb Ahmed, joined us to explain and share with us the Nigerian experience of aligning national planning efforts to the continental agenda. This was of particular importance given the economic challenges that Nigeria faces now with the much lower oil price. When we do our national plans, we, we put on the table all of the uh, global initiatives, the regional initiatives that we have committed to, to make sure that the specific commitments we made are provided for in the national plan. And for the SDGs and the Agenda 2063, a lot of the goals are common. The SDGs has uh, 17 goals and uh, the Agenda 2063 has 20 goals. And the 17 goals of the SDGs are in the uh, uh, 20 goals of the of, of the agenda 2063 so we need to collapse them we need to implement them as one to save on resources otherwise it will become too cumbersome and too burdensome for us when we carry out the implementations and of course, all state planning must be accompanied by state funding. African countries, including Nigeria, are increasingly looking to new revenue streams from their domestic base. Let me give you an example. In previous years, the oil and gas industry revenue contributes about 70% to our national budget. But in the year 2016, the oil industry is contributing only 30% of our national budget. And that means that we have been able to identify ways and means in which we can we can expand the tax base and generate more revenue from taxes from customs we've also found ways, ways and means in which we're able to harness more of the revenues that are generated by government owned enterprises which prior to now we were not seeing we were seeing only a small uh, portion of it there is a lot of effort that is ongoing to expand the tax base to bring more of the informal sector into the tax net so that more taxes are collected we're not increasing taxes this year but just by expanding the tax base improving the efficiency in the collection blocking the leakages we're able to um, put up to 70% of our budget uh, revenue from the non oil sector. And at the core of all planning processes must be credible and reliable data and the African experience has always been criticized for weakness on this front. I mean African leaders have no have no right to say they are governing if they don't know the numbers of people that they are governing. For the first time we have actually advanced that. The acid test is whether in the 2020 round of censuses we'll have all 54 running and all 48 running. Of course, there are things like uh, trouble, uh, you fight here, a battle there, which undermines running this regularly. But uh, actually, African countries and leaders have been remiss uh, in the early late 90s, early 70s. They actually forgot that they need to know their citizens and the only way they can know their citizens is when you collect the data and in 2010 we've proved that. The question is, can it be sustained? Mm. Second, when it comes to all other statistics such as economic statistics, Africa has been advancing. For instance, in this SDGs and Agenda 2063, we actually generated the indicators, mapped the SDGs on Agenda 2063 and costed the rest and said this is what it will cost to track these indicators for Africa. No country has, no region has done that. It's Africa that has done that. Well, there is something called the civil registration and vital statistics. On the back of that, there have been promises of money from all over the world. What has happened? Everybody is coming and say we can help Africa. What do they want to do? It's to come in between and access the money so that they can dish it out to Africans. You don't know what remains in the palm when they sprinkle out through their fingers uh, the funds. That's why we need 
intergovernmental processes so that funds, technology, and the statistics themselves are governed in a manner that is accountable. South Africa's Statistician General made an impassioned plea for the focus on the Global Partnership for Data, which he says will elevate the importance of data in decision-making processes and ensure that governments continue to have a significant degree of ownership over those numbers. The question of Global Partnership for Data addresses a number of things. One, that no one should be left behind when we start using technology for assembling evidence around how the world performs. Two, the Global Partnership for Data will ensure that resources that are meant for data are driven to the relevant uh, institutions or people. The third is the data itself. How does the data so collated through technology and resources such as money is protected? in particular, privacy of individuals. Now, if the global partnership for data is not governed under intergovernmental processes of the United Nations, then we have a serious problem of individuals who want to partake in the global partnership, who are private and so on, managing our data sets without the mandate that the countries hold. From the discussions that have been had here over the last five days at Africa Development Week 2016, it is clear that conversations do matter. The delegates brought their voices and their insights to the table. They also were able to test the national, the continental, as well as the regional plans that currently inform the development agenda. And today's takeaway was the importance of the numbers. Strong, reliable and credible data. Thank you so much for making the time to join us. From myself and the team here in Addis Ababa, thank you for joining us.